Canada's premiers are meeting next week in Winnipeg, but one leader has decided to sit out. Manitoba's premier invited the Inuit Tapirit Kanatami, the national voice for Inuit in Canada, and while they declined, she's still hopeful they'll attend. Now, I know there's one Inuit group that was invited that says it's not coming, it's boycotting. Does that alter discussions around the table? Or? It's happened in the past, unfortunately, but you know, it was very important that we reach out and, and invite them. And, uh, but I know that they have declined in the past as well. And you know, I still hope that they, they, w that they will come because I think they add a lot to, uh, to the discussion. President of the Inuit Tapirit Kanatami, Natan Obed, joins me now. Hello, it's a pleasure to see you. Yeah, so you had, you had said before that this is a matter of respect. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, first and foremost, um, the, the invitation by premiers to have a conversation in and of itself is fine. Who they would like to have a conversation with is, it, is the issue. And if it is the Section 35 rights holding national uh, institutions for First Nations, Inuit and Métis, then Inuit Tapirit Kanatami is the rightful invitee. Unfortunately for this meeting, um, there is a mix of different Indigenous organizations, some who have rights holding status and some who do mm -hmm. not. And for that reason, and for the reason of respect and building an agenda, which we had asked for as, as early as 2017, I still continue to decline these invitations, although I would love to be in a place to accept them. Mm -hmm. So let's dig into the reasons behind this a uh, little bit more. The groups in question are the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples and the Native Women's Association of Canada. They have responded by calling the decision not to attend disheartening. Uh, so what is the harm, uh, in your view, in including them? Well, I'll put it perhaps for Canadians in a different perspective. Uh, if I was wanting to invite premiers, but I would only meet with premiers if there were other sub-jurisdictional organizations that were invited, and I made it um, conditional upon the premiers to come that they had to also share space with people that were completely different entities. Uh, that's kind of the, the way in which this is all transpiring now. There are rights-holding institutions uh, under Section 35 for Inuit. Um, the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples and the Native Women's Association of Canada are not rights-holding institutions for Inuit. They claim to represent Inuit, and they, uh, that is the major consideration and concern that we as Inuit have in sharing our positions um, with institutions like the Government of Canada and provinces and territories. So let's talk about who will be there. Uh, you issued a joint statement today along with the Métis National Council. Their president is going, and we understand the Assembly of First Nations will be sending a representative. I understand the Métis will be presenting your concerns about future meetings. Uh, so what needs to change for you to attend uh, a future summit like this? Well, first and foremost, the premiers need to decide who, who they want to have a meeting with. And if it is with just generally Indigenous peoples uh, at the community, regional, national level, that's fine. If their intention is to meet with national leaders um, representing the rights of First Nations, Inuit and Métis, then let's have that meeting. Mm -hmm. Let's also build an agenda together. Let's work to have a respectful conversation. Let's also build scopes of work together. We'd love to work with premiers on a number of different issues. There's so many Inuit who now live in jurisdictions like Alberta, Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec. We would love to work with these premiers on how to better serve Inuit in those jurisdictions, as well as the jurisdictions in which uh, constitute Inuit Nunangat. Mm -hmm. Now I can tell you're being very diplomatic about this. You're explaining it in a way that's uh, easy to understand and parse through the facts, but I understand you've been raising these concerns for years. How frustrating is it for you to be continually raising these concerns? I know that provinces and territories and those who run them are smart enough to know the difference between rights-holding institutions and non-rights-holding institutions. Uh, I know there are tons of politics at play mm -hmm. with um, Indigenous issues across this country in certain provinces mm -hmm. and territories that have better track records than others about upholding Indigenous people's rights and respecting Indigenous rights holding institutions. It's frustrating that those jurisdictions who do not 
want to be progressive and don't want to respect the rights of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis often are the ones that hold the day when it comes to these invitations from premiers. Well, you've segued nicely into my next question. Uh, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev recently weighed into this issue. He pledged to work with groups like the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples, whom he accuses Trudeau of ignoring. What's your take on the Tory leader's position? Well, I think he's out of his depth when it comes to the, those com comments that he has made. The Government of Canada has signed treaties with First Nations, Inuit, and has agreements with Métis. There's a reason why uh, the Government of Canada has chosen to work with its partners in self-determination. Um, there are all sorts of other Indigenous organizations who do good work, but categorically there's a difference between rights holders and organizations that advocate or work on behalf of a particular group of people or community. It isn't that hard to understand when it comes to federal politics or for provincial and territorial politics, but I find that there are a number of Canadian leaders who choose not to respect Indigenous um, governance and Indigenous democracies for the benefit of their own political platforms and their own political parties. Mm. Well, I focused a little bit on the challenges and maybe some of the frustrations, but how optimistic are you you will be able to find some, for lack of a better word, reconciliation with the premiers on this issue? Well, in the last eight years, we've had so many different changes. Uh, behind the scenes as well is that for the first time in these last eight years, Inuit are receiving funds directly from the federal government for service delivery on areas like infrastructure and housing and tuberculosis elimination. These are traditionally for Inuit, the realms of public governments. So it is no wonder that there is a frustration by some of these institutions that they now have to share space with Inuit rights holders. But that's the way the country's going. And I'm confident that we're gonna be able to find a practical, productive space with, with the premiers. And we also are going to separate the rights holding First Nations, Inuit and Métis, from those who are not.